In this video, uh, I'm taking a look at the engine and trying to understand, uh, discuss a little bit about what happened. How did this, uh, how did this engine rust so badly in this one cylinder? And you can see the one in the picture here with all the, the this is a, a tremendous amount of corrosion. And um, I know it sat for a long time, but uh, this was way more than I expected uh, when I bought this car. Um, I expected to be able to turn the engine because it was in a really nice, seemingly dry garage. But this is what I found. Uh, this is what it looked like again with the cylinder and at the bottom. And you can see the piston to the right looks pretty good. I've got another shot of that here in a moment. Um, but here's the bad one. Um, the lights... Uh, the color changed a little because the lighting is different. But what I was trying to show here is, again, you can see following the, the pointer, you see this line, and this appears to be a water line where, you know, the corrosion was worst in, in this area and built up as, a, as if the water had filled up right up to the top of the cylinder. And here's the other side. You can see it start in the back, kind of comes around here to the front. Um, all of this liquid uh, rust, uh, rusty um, sludge is, is due to the amount of penetrating oil that I used, managing to dissolve it. And then as we worked, as I worked the piston back and forth, we scraped off the rust in this area and, and got it pretty well cleared out. Uh, this is cylinder number seven, which is right next to it. And uh, you can see that still has a pretty nice finish and, and really no corrosion in it. If you look at a at the TPI engine, this is how it appeared uh, when I brought it in. Uh, the interesting thing about the tuned port is you have this very large plenum on top. It's a big air volume, and then these runners that are you know a thin aluminum wall that go down to the lower intake manifold on both sides, and um, and feed across. They actually feed air into the lower intake manifold and across to the cylinder head on the opposite side. It makes a very long runner. If you uh, go to this next one, this is what that lower intake looks like when you take it apart. So the runner is attached to these ports. And it, you, can, you can see uh, the outline on the casting. So the, the air comes down from the plenum up above through this port feeds across to the other side, and here's where the injector is for the cylinder on the opposite side. So that's the airflow path across. So cylinder number five, the one that rusted, here's its injector, and you can see the port going down to the head, uh, comes across from the opposite side, and that would be this one right here. So that runner comes down, feeds this one, goes across to the other side. Um, it looks like it's a largely downhill path, um, the only thing I noticed um, is in some of these ports, I don't know that it had them in all ports, uh, but there were some passages in the floor of the ports uh, for EGR uh, to feed exhaust gas back into the intake. Um, there, there was kind of a, a manifold passage on the bottom side. So in this picture, uh, this is just kind of a cartoon I put together of of what a V8 engine looks like in, in this case, and, uh, and in a way to try to explain uh, what might have happened. Uh, because, as I said, I'm really surprised at uh, the amount of rust we had. So um, this is a, f a view of the engine looking from the front um, with the standard V8 90 degree V angle. This is the layout of the crankshaft throws. Uh, cylinders one and two up in the front, three and four are next, five and six across on the other side, and seven and eight at the rear. Uh, you can see the firing order here. This is the right, looking at the engine from the right hand side. Uh, this is looking at the engine from the left hand side. And these are depicting the cylinder, and the gray is the where the piston is sitting in the cylinder based on where I found the engine when I, um, when I, when I got it. So at this point, you could see cylinder five is at the bottom. 
and it may not have been exactly at the bottom, at bottom dead center. It, you know, it could have been up just a little bit. But when you look at the earlier photographs and you look at where the water line is, uh, it couldn't have been up very far, uh, or it wouldn't have, have held water at that point. I mean, it could have, it could have been up a quarter inch, or, but I don't think it would uh, change the discussion a lot. Um, so if you if you look, we'll start with the right hand bank. What I did uh, to go back to the left. Uh, here's cylinder five. It's at the bottom. So then I went through the firing order and looked at where each piston should be and what the status of the valve train is in each case. So I want to go down to the left here first, or to the uh, cylinder two. So cylinder two, which you can see by the crankshaft throw, is at its top position, uh, is in uh, valve overlap. The intake and exhaust valves are both open. It's just gone through an exhaust and it's getting ready to come on intake. So it's vented to exhaust, even though it could have moisture come through the intake side. Uh, four is in the middle with the valves closed. It's on a power stroke. Six is in compression. Uh, and again, the valves are all closed. Eight has exhaust uh, open, and it's getting ready to go on an exhaust stroke. One's about halfway up an exhaust stroke. Uh, three it has its valves closed. And it's, on, it's just firing. Spark plug should be firing, so it's making power. And then um, five is at the bottom with an intake valve open, and seven is halfway down roughly with an intake valve open. And seven didn't rust, as you can see in the pictures. Still not quite sure why, other than that uh, perhaps the volume of air between these two cylinders was a lot different. And if five was up above bottom dead center a little bit, seven could have been closer to the top and again, uh, would reduce the amount of air volume. So it looks like five would be a worst case. It's all the way to the bottom and uh, has the ability to, to have a, a very large air volume. So if we go back and look at how does this engine lay out, um, here you can see the plenum with the, the uh, throttle body, the throttle plates. Uh, this plenum is just a big open chamber behind the throttle body. It's uh, It's got a large air volume. The runners are long and they're individuals and, you know, th thin aluminum tube. Goes into that lower intake manifold, which is aluminum, and goes across to the other side and, and feeds the cylinder. So five had an open intake valve, maybe not fully open, but considerably. Uh, it was... Um, you know, piston was at the bottom, and if you had a water line, you could see on the si side of the cylinder, this is what would happen if it filled up with water up, up to the intake valve. Um, and, you know, the cylinder block and the cooling system is a big uh, thermal mass. It doesn't change temperature very easily, but this aluminum intake and the runners and the plenum do. And the garage was dry, but the neighborhood that it was in um, was fairly flat. And sometimes these unheated garages have a lot of humidity. And it just seems that either the moisture condensed in the runner and ran down in, um, or just the, the cycling every day of air in and out of this cylinder, it managed to capture it. Uh, it seems as though the, the exhaust uh, valve, the cylinders with exhaust valves open, didn't collect any moisture. They were they were all good. So it it seems to have something to do with the tuned port system, and perhaps it had an extra sensitivity. Um, I would expect that the water at some point, when you started, um, the piston rings, depending on how good they seal, and you have gaps in the rings, that the water would work its way past the rings and go down into the pan. But at some point, these rings rusted. And the water built up over over time, and it, it obviously held water in that cylinder for for a, a great period of time over the 25 or so years that it was parked. Uh, I guess that means when we store engines, we really do need to make sure we use fogging oil or some uh, heavy lubrication uh, to keep these cylinder walls from rusting. Uh, makes me wonder a little bit whether there's any fogging oil good enough to to prevent this, but um, 
but that would seem to be, uh, you know, this car, based on talking to the owner's father, didn't have any significant prep. They put it in the garage and turned it off. And and uh, I think they, you know, they had a cover, they protected it, but maybe just didn't know, you know, how to best prepare an engine for long-term storage. So uh, this is what I found. Uh, now the question is, uh, what do I do? Um, I've been talking about whether, you know, rebuilding it. I can either rebuild it or I can replace it. And uh, that's a discussion uh, for another day.